Hello, this is Swed Wasi and as promised I'm launching the first ever talk show on English and that is called the, uh, I have given the name I Speak English. So I have with me our special guest uh, Adiba Noshin, she is a lecturer at Breck University and I will welcome her but before that let me just introduce uh, the idea of this talk show so we can start because this is the very first episode we are launching and uh, our intention here is to teach you English in an innovative way through activities or, or basically discussion with a special guest and in each episode I will be inviting topmost uh, uh, or top ranking professionals from Bangladesh like doctors, engineers, lecturers, bankers and in the very first episode we have a lecture at a renowned uni private university in Bangladesh and our main goal is to promote uh, the fact that uh, mistake is a part of learning. So uh, we Bangladeshis should not bother about mistake while trying to speak in English. So that's what we are going to promote uh, here uh, through a lot of activities. So let me introduce Adiba. Why don't you introduce yourself briefly? <laughs> Hello everyone. Uh, I would say it's a pleasure being here today. I'm Adiba Naushin. I'm currently working as a lecturer at Brack University and teaching business and accounting. Uh, I did my bachelor's, both my bachelor's and master's from Sydney, from Western Sydney, Australia. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, again, uh, before I start, uh, let me tell you another important thing, and that is everybody, those who will be invited here, they'll be speaking in English and we will deliver the whole thing in English, and because that's about English. And that's for basically the people who are interested to learn English, in the target language, not in Bangla or any in any other language. So this is suitable suitable for any learner from any country. But we have targeted our targeted audience is Bangladeshi speakers. And uh, another thing is that like professionals like her, though she is an excellent speaker of English, but uh, there will be other speakers who are top most uh, top level professionals. Still, you will feel that they are making mistakes, and they mm -hmm. welcome this. They they don't bother about that because they are humans we are humans and mistake is a part of learning and that's what we are going to assure here okay adiba let me just ask you the first question for today sure. uh how did you come to be an english speaker in the first place uh, did you go to any uh, Bangla medium school or was it um, English medium school? I went to an English medium school named Scholastica. Okay. Uh, so I graduated from there. Um, I wouldn't say that the only reason I know how to speak English or I'm that fluent in English is because of the medium of my education. It's also because the time I've spent uh, listening to music also as well as listening to, uh, sorry, watching movies as well. So I think that, that really gives you a first hand experience on um, the pronunciation and everything, the fluency as well. So that's how. Right. To help so uh, the message that is given to us is that uh, you know you can re you can't really memorize a lot of grammar rules and then learn English. It's not possible at all. Grammar rules may be effective at some point, uh, but they are not basically at that level that is called the traditional grammar. This is not going to be the effective way. So basically, we have to read a lot, listen a lot, and then you have to try to speak in English. Okay, so my next question to you, uh, uh, you are teaching at Bragg, right? Yes. But your subject is not English. No, it's accounting. So I would like to ask you, how do you find your students in terms of English language skills? Are they good? Uh, well, it depends from student to student, obviously. So, for example, if I have a class of 40 students, um, it will be a, we'll have a ratio of 70-30. Okay. Because... Uh, so you are saying... So 70% 70 will be uh, people who I have to correct, I, I have to correct their English more often compared to the other 30%. Uh, maybe because of the medium of education they're from. 70% of the people in my class are from Bengali medium mm -hmm. as opposed to English medium. So I think that just the, that just gives the English medium people a first hand experience or an, or an edge to have a good pronunciation. But at the same time, I can also say that the 70% who are not very fluent in English, that does not mean in writing they're not very good. They are still very good in writing, but then when it comes to fluency, they're probably not that fluent. All right, so uh, one more question that is, uh, even though your subject is not English, they're not uh, studying English, but my question to you is that, is it really necessary to learn English for even say a business subject? Oh, 100%. Because uh, I believe that English is a mode of communication and there is no point of you trying to talk to someone if they don't know what you're talking about. It just it will be termed as a chatter. 
in other words, right? So um, although you, although I'm trying to teach accounting or I'm trying to teach business in class, if they don't understand the way I'm delivering my speech, which the mode of which is English, it will be very difficult for them to grasp, right? Yeah. Also, I would like to add that English is a global language. For you, if you want to work in a multinational company, if you want to work in any of the corporates in Bangladesh as well as abroad, you need to know what English is. You need to know, it does not matter if you are very fluent in it or not, okay, if it's um, error free or not, you just have to know basic English. So it does not depend on the subject at all. Okay, so here I would like to one point that I have observed as an English language trainer. Uh, students basically they actually waste their time worrying about the CGPAs like they are so much worried in about you know the A plus grade in English or in all subjects but ultimately this is not going to help you and uh, the sad thing is that we are not serious when we need to be for example we have to be serious about English from the start of school uh, say primary or secondary school but we get worried when people come to her level, like lecturers, professors, bankers, then they get worried, oh my God, I'm not, I'm not able to use English properly. So, you know, uh, before you actually come to that level and then find yourself, you know, nowhere, you better start learning right now. And those who are professionals, this is the right time for you to learn. So there is no end to learning. Don't worry about mistakes. My ne next question to you is that, uh, I was coming to mistake. So do you think mistake is a part of learning English? Because Bangladeshis are so much bothered about making mistakes. They're basically worried that, you know, this is a kind of insult. What do you think about it? Well, that? we are all humans. So we are bound to make mistakes. And to be honest, I know English has a lot of grammars in it. Okay, it might get confusing for newbies who are trying to learn English. Whenever you're trying to communicate with someone, okay, you don't need to have a hundred percent correct, uh, a sentence is hundred percent correct. For example, forget about English, even if we talk in Bangla, I'm pretty sure if, in, if I'm talking, if I'm writing one paragraph or if I'm talking for like 10 minutes, I'm pretty sure there will be hundreds of mistakes, right? So it does not matter if you're making mistakes or not, as long as you can let the other person know who you're talking to, if you, if you can let the other person know what you're talking about in English, that's what mode of communication comes into play, right? So mistakes is about to happen. It's bound to okay. happen. Absolutely. For example, as I was saying, there is no end to learning. Doesn't matter, you know, what kind of profile you have. I'm an English language trainer, but I don't consider myself devoid of every, you know, any kind of mistake in English. It's not possible. So the last question. This this was the answer. Uh, I mean, question round. So my last question to you is, for this round that do you think that you also, even though you're an English medium student, do you think you make mistakes as well in English? Yes, I definitely did. And I also believe that um, even if, although like I'm from Bangladesh and I'm bound to make mistakes, I've studied abroad and believe me, even people who have English as their first language, they make more mistakes than we do because they don't, they don't learn more, right. as much grammar as we learn while we are, you know, in our school or even high school. So, uh, yeah, so you are, you will make mistakes. And again, I keep repeating this. As long as the other person knows what you're talking about, you're fine. Okay. Yeah. Great. So, yes, as you can see, that's the purpose for this show. Like, I will be bringing those people who have already had a long experience and they're highly qualified. Like, she has already studied abroad and that's definitely in English. And she's telling you that don't worry about mistake. Right, so that's what we want to tell you now. They actually make more mistakes than we do, to be honest. The like, native speakers. Yeah, definitely, okay. native speakers. Because mm -hmm. um, I remember when I used to go out with my friends or even working abroad, uh, I used to see that their sentence structure is way different to what I've studied. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like uh, it used to really bother me right. because they had a lot of grammatical mistakes. But then at the end of the day, it didn't really matter. Absolutely. And remember, for speaking, you don't, as I said, 10% mistake, 20% mistake, doesn't matter if you can communicate. And for writing, as she was saying, some of us even better than, are better than the native speakers themselves, because a native speaker is not necessarily able to produce an excellent piece of writing. Speaking is a different stuff. But we are mostly promoting here the idea of speaking, and here you cannot actually think so many things and then speak, it's not possible. Okay, now I'm going to another round that is called quiz round. So I'm going to ask you some I'm questions excited. regarding English because I'm going to teach some English to my learners here. So this is the learning part for you basically through her. So my, uh, I'm going to test your English now. 
So, okay. All right. Ready. So I'm going to say a few sentences. There will be five sentences. Okay. So not necessarily every sentence has a mistake, but there might be a mistake. Okay. So I will uh, read the sentence quickly, and you just uh, you if you think there is a mistake in the sentence, you say wrong. If you think that is correct, you say right. Okay. okay. And if it is a wrong sentence, I'll ask you where did you find the mistake. Okay. Okay. So the first sentence for you. Rabbi is scared of speaking English. Rabbi is scared of speaking English. I said scared. Okay. If it's scared, it's wrong. Achha, why is it wrong? Because it has to be scared. There has to be a D, right? There has the to be a D. has to be past participle because Rabbi is is a, a kind of sentence formation after which there has to be a kind of adjective. And here we have made the verb adjective by making it PP. Uh, let me give you another example. The chair is broken. You can never say the chair is break. So after is, M is, R was where either you use ing with the verb or pp, but the meanings change. Okay, next sentence for you. He is nuts. Correct. Sorry. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, uh, although you might think that after he is, there is a word called nuts, and you must be wondering what it is. It's a kind of phrase that is used for people who are out of control or they are not mentally stable or something like that. But it's a kind of informal phrase, uh, not uh, actually used to mean a completely mad man, but probably at that moment he's out of control or he know he's not, you know, like a sane person. So we use the phrase, he is nuts. Next sentence. Do you speak English? Right. So there's a correct sentence, right? Do you speak English? Next one. Are you speaking English? Wrong. Why is it wrong? Because it has to be do you speak English. Right, because speak is a verb here. And yeah. with the verb present form, you can never use are. Uh, that's a rule, grammar rule. Uh, that's why what you have to do is that understand these things at the basic level and when you speak English, don't bother about that. Uh, even if you are saying, are you speaking English? In the future, if you hear someone saying, do you speak English? You will automatically correct that. Okay, the last sentence for you. Mistake are a part of learning. Mistake is a part of learning or mistakes are a part of Absolutely, learning. Absolutely, because singular plural, yeah, right? Yeah, singular plural. Good. Okay, so now I'm going to say a few words. Uh, you have to identify if they are verbs or non-verbs, okay? okay? The purpose here is that those who are connected with the online learning program of SIL that is being run on this very page, uh, you will know that uh, the, the way I teach from the very first module is by helping you to identify verbs and non-verbs because that helps you uh, make sentences properly, right? So you can utilize that skill later, but let me just quickly uh, uh, teach you a few Might things. Might be a bit difficult for me. Okay. Yeah. These are simple okay. words. Bad. Non-verb. Good. Non-verb. Need. Uh, verb and non-verb. Both. Both. Yes. Yeah. Like I need a pen. That's a verb. Yeah. I'm in need of money. That is now. Now. Yeah. Or there is a need for money, right? Yeah. Okay. Host. Uh, verb. Okay. Like I'm hosting this show now, right? Okay. Speak. Uh, verb. Verb. Speaking. It's a verb as well as a non-verb. Okay. Uh, when can we use it as a non-verb? Uh, for example, if I say your speaking is really good. Right. So that's Absolutely. that's that's, that's, that's a non-verb, right? right. Okay. And when you are saying you speak, then you speak. Well, you cannot right. say you are speak. Okay. okay. Yeah. Read. Um, verb. Computer. Non-verb. Want. Verb and non-verb. Uh, non-verb. Verb. There verb. You, that's verb. A verb. Okay. One. verb. I want a pen. Yeah, right? okay. But then your want, people's yeah. wants are unlimited. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you can use that, but uh, I think it's uh, quite a bit uncommon for the usual learner. They'll okay. be confused. Okay. So okay. it's a verb. Yeah. Okay. Hold. Uh, verb. Absolutely. So you got almost 100% marks there. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the next round is uh, I have I mean I have named this uh, round stupid fire round. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a few questions, and that is the last round for you. Uh, I'm going to ask you a few questions that might not sound sane or logical, but the idea is that you have to speak. So again, okay. uh, the idea is that whenever you practice speaking, doesn't matter what kind of a topic it is, start talking, saying anything. Okay. So my first question to you is. If you had a basket of mangoes, what would you do? Well, they're of course my favorite fruits. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not sharing it for sure. <laughs> Probably a demo. Okay. Yeah. Alright, so the question was asked in a conditional sentence. If you had a basket of mangoes, mangoes, what would you do? So she also answered with the word would. I would do this or that. That's the kind of format you have to learn. That can be, I mean, a module has been delivered on this in my other learning program called uh, the online learning program. You can find it here. Okay. What if you suddenly find yourself in a fantasy land where there are wizards and fairies? Hmm. I would make friends okay, with them. With, yeah. the with the with the wizards, because they'll be more adventurous. But, they would uh, probably be more. Adventurous. Do you think that they might be scary or? Yeah, but then that's the whole point, right? They'll be more adventurous. So I think the scary part will okay. add to it. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Okay. So we use the phrase "what if." Uh, to again put a condition, right? This is not reality, but what if something happens, right? So you can always start with what if to ask someone to put a condition and then ask for a result. What if, what if you have one million and you know uh, you, you live in America? Okay, number three, have you ever thought of trying acting? I actually did. I actually did act when I was really? little. Yeah, I actually did act. I was in a Bangla drama. Really? Yeah, and also like I used to do TV shows in BTV as well. That didn't count as much, but okay. I believe I'll be really good at acting because I used to do that, take part in acting um, a lot in, when I was in school. Okay, I didn't know that though, Sorry. but uh, I think that was a good question then. Okay, number four. Uh, if we, if you were not teaching, what else would you be doing? Well, to be honest, I love talking to people. Okay. So uh, if I was not teaching, I would be working at a corporate in. A, probably in a marketing department because that would require me to con you know communicate with a lot of people and not have like a desk job so I'll probably be working and then you know say oh like a sales salesperson interesting marketing, marketing interestingly for me I used to dream of working in the corporate field though I did work but uh, my dream or my expectation was actually not up to the mark because I might I found my passion actually in teaching and training so you ha you should be doing whatever you're passionate about. I feel like teaching is more fulfilling though. So that's corporate. What you like, right? Yeah, definitely. I like um, teaching more mm -hmm. better than a corporate. All right. Setup. Now uh, a tougher part of this round and okay. the last part of, uh, of our show. I'm going to give you tongue twister. Do you have your script there? Yeah. Okay. So she's going to read some tongue twisters. Okay. Oh, though I'm not sure if, even if I can read them properly at a go. Uh, the idea is that, uh, let me tell you what tongue twisters are. Uh, there are some sentences which you can find on the internet if you search by tongue twisters. They are very helpful for improving pronunciation skills. Like if you have some kind of inertia in the tongue to pronounce tough sound patterns in English, then those will help you. You will also enjoy it. For example, Read the first sentence for the audience. Okay, how about we go like this? I will say, I'll read it once and then you have to read it again. <laughs> after me. Okay? Alright, All right. but uh, though I'm not sure if I can do it correctly. Okay, let's, yes, okay, yes. let's do this. Okay. She sells seashells on the seashore. Okay. So I want it a bit faster, but there was correct. Okay, I'll, right now. okay I'll do it faster. Okay. okay. She sells seashells on the seashore. Okay, let me try. She sells seashells on the seashore. I think I, I was faster, right? No, I was faster. Okay. <laughs> Alright then. Uh, try the next one, I think that's harder. Okay, that's harder, okay. <clears throat> okay, sorry. Uh, how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck would chuck wood? Oh my god, I can't do that. <laughs> how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Faster, faster. Right? No, you have to go faster. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck uh, could chuck wood? <laughs> okay. okay. Better. So, uh, uh, but one point, like, you know, whenever you pronounce wood, that that will be a kind of a fricative sound, uh, like there has to be a, you know, uh, mm, uh, expel, you have to expel some air, wood. You, you cannot say wood, something like that. And wood, so after a, when it, there is a vowel sound, it sounds slightly like ja, like would you, could you, would, something like that. Okay, the next one, please. Oh, is that like a, oh, okay, the finish with this funny point. Okay. So there is a funny point for you to finish with. I think this is not tough. Yeah, okay. you just finish it. All I want is a proper cup of coffee, made in a proper copper coffee pot. I may be off my dot, but I want a cup of coffee from a proper coffee pot. Excellent. Let me okay. try and yes. then we'll finish. All I want is a proper cup of coffee, made in a proper copper coffee pot. I may be off my dot, but I want a cup of coffee from a proper coffee pot. You were better. Thank you. <laughs>
Okay, so uh, that was all for this show. I think you've enjoyed, and uh, we'll be coming back shortly. Uh, remember, please, that uh, the schedule for this show is every week that we, it will be shifted to Thursday, every Thursday, 8, 8 30 p.m., or that might be 9 p.m. So let's fix it for 9 p.m. every Thursday, every week. So every week I will be inviting a top-level professional like her, and we will enjoy a lot, and we will learn English through fun, and we don't bother about mistakes. 